I'm going to reconvene the Board of Supervisors with the day of that 14 to January meeting for the joint meeting with the school board. All of my board members are present. <coughs> Okay. Do you need to convene the meeting? Well, um, we can You are on Monday. You are on the 13th. Correct. Okay. Um, they asked to start with the CIP, and I told them they could give us an overview. I'm trying to hold our questions because I've got a fairly lengthy list of topics, and I'm just trying to get an <coughs> overview of all these topics because we do have, we kind of need to start our board meeting at time because we have a load of, of um, public hearings tonight. So I apologize if this is going to be fast and furious, but we have a long agenda tonight as well. So we will start. Dr. Calavera with the Capital Improvement Plan. Um, and I'd just like to raise a little sentiment for our board. Um, we're going to keep the conversation focused on the overview of the CIP and the operations budget. If you have any questions, we'll park the lot. And I'm going to that time. Just so that you're aware, we are going to do a quick overview of CIP and then each of the board members will take on the 12 budget priorities that we have to do. Okay, just remember, we're on a clock. Yeah, and we will be succinct, and my New York, my New York roots will definitely, definitely be demonstrated tonight as I give you a very high-level drive-by. So we will be succinct and speedy. Um, Marcia Stevens, our Chief Operations Officer, will join me for the delivery of the CIP. So if you turn your attention, everything we do is grounded in Pathways 2022, our four driving goals. Goal one, teaching and learning. Two, school and community relationships. Three, health and safety. And four, organizational effectiveness. This is applicable not only to the operations budget, but of course CIP. All priorities that are submitted for both budgets align directly with one of these four goals. Our process was um, very comprehensive in nature and it was inclusive of many stakeholders. We started with CIP walks. When I started as superintendent, I needed to go into every facility with an organizational lens so to inform the CIP process. So we had a large number of our senior staff um, move through each building to begin collecting evidence of our needs for CIP. We had CIP committee meetings with a diverse stakeholder body. We had school board meetings. We, of course, submitted our CIP to Mr. Fincham and the new system, which we're appreciative of. We really um, like that new model that you all embraced. And then, of course, we are meeting with the county. The CIP, the CIP budget parameters, we were given those last fiscal year from the county staff, um, and we just have developed the CIP budget based on that. It's over 50000 or new or significant, and capital outlay is included in an operational budget, replacement repairs, and ongoing maintenance. We also purchased a HEDA box, which is a facility facility maintenance system. They came on site in October. Um, they are inputting the data. They took the um, put QR codes on our major assets, um, HVAC, electrical, and plumbing. They are inputting all that data, and within the next couple of weeks, we will have a review of that data, and then it will go into a on um, on site into a maintenance system. We'll be able to have long range planning on those assets. Turn it over for priorities. So we'll delve deeply into each of the priorities, which begins with objective 3.1, pre crisis preparation and prevention. And this is where we'll talk a lot about um, the safety matters that we hope to address, specifically two fire alarms, Lewis and Clark Elementary and the school board office. We'll give you visuals to accompany each of the items that we talk about. On the left-hand side, you see our beautiful Calandra Sims, one of our administrative assistants, working out of the school board office. As you can see, she is about a 5'5 five, five adult, 5 feet 5 inch adult, and you can see the height of the old school fire alarm system. That only provides an audible noise. There is no visual. And so therefore, we have two hearing impaired adults at our building. Without support from their colleagues, they, they are not always able to hear what the alarm is saying because we don't have that visual accompaniment. Additionally, it is not wired to fire an EMS. 
Therefore, if the school board office does catch fire, we rely on our neighbors to call fire EMS if the building is, is currently not occupied. So this is a large priority um, to get an updated alarm system. On the right hand side, you'll see Lewis and Clark. You'll see Lewis and Clark is our newest building. It was built in 2006. Yes, you would be right in saying that. But I do believe that we must have received the last box on the shelf in terms of installation of fire alarms. This fire alarm system is archaic. It is challenging to repair. So Lewis and Clark? It yes. is. The parts are no longer accessible. On the right school, school, board office. Right. School, school board office, okay. Lewis and Clark. Okay. okay? And so we want to um, get ahead and be proactive <coughs> of this model so that we don't have a complete shutdown, which would require a 24-7 human watch until a new installation was completed. The other items that are related to elementary school safety are some gym wall matting, some ADA access to playgrounds, and trailer access and egress. Some accompanying pictures. On the left-hand side is Madison. They've had an increase in concussions. A lot of little bodies running around, they get warm, they lose track of their spatial awareness, and so they're hitting these walls that need to be covered with matting. On the right-hand side, you still have learning cottages out back of Madison. These still are utilized by Head Start as well as support staff, and we need to make sure that our ramps are updated for ADA compliance. For our secondary school safety, we have the CHS CTE air conditioning lane that houses outer culture, automotive, and the building trades. CHS CTE outdoor fencing and the high school stadium bleachers are out of compliance and show up on our safety audit each year and the CMS indoor bleachers also out of compliance. For, for some pictures on the left here are the CHS stadium. Um, there is a larger gap than four inches of what compliance is between the seating and the flooring. Uh, on the top right with the air conditioning not in the building they are often outside also for JROT and the building trains with that that for humanity and all, carrying walls and out. The doors are open um, for that, and therefore we would like to put fencing in to protect um, the children and that soft entry into that building. And then on the bottom right are the pictures of CMS bleachers. There are no handrails going up those bleachers, so we are looking to be able to install bleachers onto those. For, for pathways, the facilities maintenance to implement proactive measures to result in well-maintained modernized school facilities and technology infrastructures. So our division facility needs the CMS auditorium lighting and seating. We have in the proposal 50 um, seats to be replaced, the annex windows, facility equipment upgrades um, or for the grounds and custodial, and then CHS auditorium lighting and sound and the red gym lighting. You'll see on these pictures, and the picture on the right are the ones that the building hosts um, our governor's school and the CDLC alternative school. Those windows were replaced, and the ones on the back and the rear of the building, or the rear and the right side of the building, do not have not been replaced. And we do have water leaks in those windows, um, and we need to maintain those. Picture in the top left is an auditorium seating we just we're getting to where they are running out of parts to repair them so we need to be able to repair 50 seats in there the site the um, lighting in there for the auditorium and for the high school both of those are in need of replacement and then the gym in the red gym the um, balances and the lights they've taken way too many hits from the volleyballs and the basketballs and um, we can't find the parts anymore they need replaced I was in the gym on Saturday. We all done something. They have replaced some of the. Correct. They have done some replacement, but um, we want to go with a more efficient LED energy saving model as well. And that leads us to objective 3.3, which is mental health and wellness. I want to focus in on the fact that mental health and wellness is the coordination of physical and social emotional well being. So, this is where you'll see some athletics come into play. The items that rose to the top in our prioritization activities, stadium field lights, specifically going to an LED model, a, a replacement, an upgrade. There are 13 lights out currently on that football field. Turf was the number one request from students. They want turf because it's well maintained. Um, the human resources necessary to maintain that field are tremendous. 
drainage impedes our ability to hold um, games. Now, please understand this was a student's request because they want not only football, but they want it to be lined for other athletics so it's a more inclusive space. Um, it can be lined for soccer and it can be lined for field hockey, I believe. And so um, it would become a multi-purpose uh, usage. Wrestling facility, we'll show you a picture of what they are currently um, associated with and why they are using the YMCA um, as an off-site program. And also, this is a tremendously flourishing program and so a certified <coughs> um, and um, supportive of the increasing numbers. Also, softball field, which isn't a new topic for this group, uh, Mr. Thomas has brought this to our attention. It has made our, our list accessibility to the facility as well as field improvements. And then number five is just we need additional athletic fields for health and PE as well as mixed use. So let me share with you some photos. Here are our antiquated lighting. Um, pieces associated with the football fields. You can see that in the middle of the field, the quality of the field is very challenging. Paul Heiser, our athletic activities director, has actually gone out with green paint and sprayed the field so that it looked um, appropriate to receive visitors. Um, if you've had the opportunity to go to other facilities and other localities, you can see where some of our athletic facilities pale in comparison. Um, you also can see the softball field. This doesn't necessarily do that downgrade justice, um, but if you've gone to cheer on our, our ladies' softball, you know it's extremely challenging, and if you have any handicap of any sort or just instability in walking, it's hard to get from the parking lot down to the viewing area. This is an example of some of our practice fields and the quality that they're in, and then this is an example of some available space um, with some area in the back that could be used in the future um, for some additional athletic um, fields. This is a wrestling facility. The students are wrestling out of this trailer and this is what you find when you could enter into this facility. I will share with you that the students are emboldened, they're empowered, and their coaches are as well and I would imagine you will be hearing from them as public hearing opportunities come about. They have created t-shirts the t-shirts have this picture on them. It says something to the fact, tell me about your million dollar facility while I wipe you off the floor, wipe you up off the floor. And so they are loud and proud in their mission to have a facility that reflects their sense of pride in this sport. Which leads us to goal for organizational effectiveness. So our last goal of the CIP is the organizational performance in order to enhance that. So we have um, technology needs, just classroom computers, um, classroom technology, staff computers, and security cameras. Um, those are our everyday needs that we have. We are on a seven year replacement cycle right now for the staff computers. Um, just quick pictures of the, the computers, you see how they are getting old, not keeping up with the new. Um, transportation needs, we have the bus, um, service vehicles, and then the student transport. The, um, pictures tell us a thousand words here. Our vehicles are certainly having some age and life on them. We have provided in the folders the age um, and um, details on our fixed assets and the service vehicles for the maintenance staff and then the car vehicles to transport our students. Most of those come, well all of those come down um, from the sheriff's office through the county process through the departments and then come to the schools. The final items associated with our presentation are capital outlay. That is anything that falls below $50,000 or is more of a replacement product. And so here are some of those items. Interior repairs such as science laboratories. We need some furniture associated um, with the science labs as well as basic furniture needs. Exterior repairs such as track being repainted and, top, and the top coat um, being laid. We have lighting um, issues on exterior buildings. We have some technology needs, such as the VoIP server replacement. All of our phones run through the internet, so that is something that is, is of great need. <coughs> and an uninterruptible power supply. And so all of this has a grand total of 3.3. We recognize we are bringing a large list of needs to you, and we know that that is a lofty goal that may not be attained, but we feel it's important for us to share all of our needs and then talk about where we need to start if we can't do it all. So we understand that, but we wanted you to have that holistic picture, picture so we could prioritize collaboratively. Did you prioritize? 
first? Um, our, our committee, yes sir, our committees went through prioritization activities um, in order to determine what made it into <coughs> presentation. Yes. And, and we have a list of your priorities? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if someone, um, Dr. McGrath, could you have, please keep a list of yes, some of our to-dos for the next 60 minutes? <laughs> Give us an idea of how much it costs to maintain the football field. Grass cutting, all that stuff, so we yes. can actually look at how long it would take to get the five trip. We can absolutely do that analysis for you. I think it takes like 15 or 20 years to justify it, but if you could help us, that, that might be a good thing. Certainly, we can do that. And the Athletic Advisory Committee, that is a task that they can certainly begin to tackle. Yeah, just a question on the athletic facilities. Is there a way, um, <clears throat> I remember last year with the softball, I think there was a little miscommunication as far as the softball football lines, or is there a way you can get the, uh, the coaches to some of these individual two one teams, um, the wrestling coach, the softball coach, the football coach, something so that they can kind of explain their side of things? Because I think that would be a big help that the coaches, the coaches <coughs> of those teams would want to include what's going on. Sure, they would love to come and have a seat at the table. I know Mr. Forehand serves on our Athletic Advisory Committee, so he may be privy to some of that dialogue already. But if we do schedule a follow-up, whether it's a two-on-two -two or an additional joint, we'd be happy to have them come prepared to talk about those items. So we will now get back over to Dr. Rollins Bells. If there are no other questions associated with CIP, it will switch our, our uh, mental state into the operations side of the house. Awesome. Um, just as a time check, the time is 517. Thank you, ladies, for keeping back since to the point. Um, so next, we're going to transition into the operation budget. Please believe in your folder you have a um, pen handout. Um, we, are, we are, yes, sir. Okay. And so as we begin to look at the overview of the operations budget, just wanted to really quickly anchor us in <coughs> um, the process. So we begin gathering budget priorities from the building level um, staff, as well as the departments. And just like with the CIP, everything that we are bringing forward is aligned to the strategic plan. Um, that is a key uh, requirement. There are additional 65 budget requests. Um, and then the story has to be very specific. Advisory Council that meets the superintendent is also advising the school. 
So having said that, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Carson, who is going to go over um, the governor's budget proposal. Ms. Carson. In the folder, everyone has um, this is just an overview of slide. It's the governor's proposed budget. And um, it's broken down into three categories, uh, the technical adjustments, such as the benchmarking process, it includes the inflation factors, the rate of salary and cost, the calculation of the local composite index, Carolina's local composite index factor, uh, increased by 3.1, updated sales tax revenues, updated lottery revenue expenses, then it goes to direct aid changes, which include the four-year contribution rate for ERS, and <coughs> salary increase for funding as their key positions, the second year of the biennium FY 2022. Increased funding for school counselors, increased staffing ratios for English as a second language programs, additional funding for at risk, decrease in lottery for people funding and school meals expansion. And then the final is early childhood. With the governor's budget on early childhood education, a large number of changes to the DPI have been proposed, which include for people increased class sizes in 1920, mixed delivery grant opportunities, and a decrease in required local match. And after Governor Northland's proposal was published, CCPS utilized the template and determined an increase in state funding of approximately 900,000. This money is not to fund compensation and has been earmarked for all mandates, ERS and school counselors, as well as health insurance needs. So if I could interject, Mr. Sealy, I believe that is one of the questions that you have posed. So we are expecting an approximate $900,000 of increased funding, not intended for compensation, but to utilize for VRS, the school counseling mandate, and health insurance increases. And we will give you an update on insurance here momentarily. Go ahead, Mr. Cohen. Would the states give a 3%? In the second year of the biennium, FY22. Yeah. 22, actually. So it, is, it specifically states zero funding from year one. Do y'all have a number on what they capacity they're going to provide that to us for the discussion? They're going to put the, because they're also looking at the compression that they're going to have when that happens. That's going to be everybody. So there's no state funding appropriated for year one of the biennium, meaning we're not getting 
down. So for us to proceed with a 5% salary increase, which raises the starting teacher salary to $43,311, still below most of our neighboring divisions, and just slightly above the FY18 minimum market value. Uh, we're looking at an increase of $1,551,452. One <coughs> and again, that's with no state money coming in. So for us to implement that final stage of the study, that's where we would be. And that actually closes no gap. It solely gets us to the FY18 minimum market value. So therefore, the salary study did not do what it was intended to do because our neighboring division had been receiving the same types of salary increases <coughs> that we were. We were we were under the impression Mr. that Mr. Third was six hundred thousand. Right, because right, we divided it into the first so did it in thirties, third, third, third to do the whole salary study that we did. Well in year one and year two we did not receive six hundred thousand dollars from the Board of Supervisors towards salaries. Um, Mrs. Stevens, would you like to provide an additional comment associating with that? Certainly. The funding for the first two were over a million dollars of fees or at a million dollars of fees. Um, we did put all our state funding that we were receiving towards those raises. And so the amount that we received from the state diminished what we needed to provide and therefore what was provided by <coughs> the county was not equated to 600000 in year one or year two. Got an issue on our side. I'm under the impression that we, we contributed 600,000. I know your insurance costs went up, mm -hmm. so that the effect of of the actual raises on teachers may have been minimal because insurance went up even though we gave money, we thought we were raising. So the insurance factor has nothing to do with minimum market value and our ability to achieve, achieve that. So. We're going to carry into item number two, and we'll give you more information when we come in February, but please know in order to meet that minimum market value of FY18, it is a cost of $1.5 million, and that still puts us only at a starting salary of 43311 which is still below the majority of our neighbors. So moving on to point two with employee health insurance. Uh, good news is we're not looking at a 30% increase like we were last year, let's close to it. Uh, we have three quarters of printing data that we can fairly comfortably say that we're looking at an increase of around 10%. Um, we do not anticipate receiving a renewal rates though until February or March. Um, as you guys know, we restructured how the insurance was done, so that's been very helpful for us. Um, right now, though, it's a 10% increase of the dollar figure on that is going to be $671,463. For the health insurance. And the third point, the VRS mandate, the state was nice enough to review their mandatory contribution. Going from um, the actuary was lowered from 7 to 6.5%. And this results in an increase in employer's responsibility. There's no VRS increase that would impact the employees. This is just the employer. Uh, this is a $238,132. We are electing to utilize the 900000 to cover the VRS increase, the school counselor mandate, and then the remaining will be put towards health insurance. That is how we are choosing to utilize that 900000 <coughs> So what's the increased counselor cost? We are two items away from the counselor. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Spalding. Mr. Spalding. You know, I have a budget item, work-based learning coordinator, glove month uh, job, and this was a goal 1.1 profile for graduate 1.4 student achievement community and business partnerships. Beginning in 2022, the state accreditation system will begin using the college a career readiness index score as a portion of each high school accreditation rating. All graduates from the class of 2022 and beyond are required to have CCR appearance. The DVOE just published 11 work based learning experience that requires significant planning, implementing, and monitoring. This case will work with business to establish internships. 
externships, job shadowing, mentorship, and to allow students with appropriate experience. This will enhance the 3D readiness and safety heating program, which is, runs approximately 77,384. Mr. Spalding, if I could interject, you do have the VDOE's 11 experiences that they're asking divisions to begin implementing. It's extremely comprehensive and we wanted you to see how detailed that process is and why this position is so critical. This position would be housed at the high school and would work 6 through 12. So it would be a school-based position. You also have a um, job description enclosed in your folder so you can learn a little bit more about what that position would look like. As I was saying, I was getting to that. Uh, let's go on now to the uh, school uh, school counselor. This is mandated. Goal 1.4: Student Achievement 2.2: Staff and Student Relationship 3.3: Mental Mental Health and Wellness. The governor has embraced the gold standard ratio for school counselors. The budget supports the implementation of the year two of the three-year reduction. <coughs> school counselors change or charge for 2021 is elementary, one to every 450, middle, one to every 370, <coughs> high school, one to 325, to elementary, one 375, middle, one 325, high school, one every 300. The year three ration, ration runs will require all levels to be 150 and CPS will need to hire additional five counselors 21 22 to meet this mandate. And that will run us um, at 73 151. One counselor. Which, which means we had talked about asking for three, the money to support three this year, knowing that in the year, third year we'll have to hire five and everybody will be competing for counselors. But because of the cost associated with the projects, we're moving forward with one, with the understanding that to get down to this, the final year of implementation in 21-22, we'll need to add five additional counselors for a ratio of one to 250. Next item we have, We'll need three classroom teachers, goal 1.4, teaching and, and language student achievement goal, 4.2, organization effectiveness, HR management. Uh, Madison Elementary School, 1, 4th grade, 29 grade teacher, and 1, 5th grade, 27.3 grade teacher for 2021 20, class sizes. Carolina High School requires one additional English teacher remain in compliance with the English SOQ and the total for the three features we run 219452. Why are we with ADM since we're going to talk about new teachers because ADM last year we lost, we lost roughly 200 state funding which was about 70 some students. We are trending exactly where we had predicted. So we had, uh, it was 4077 and 4076, so we're at about 4077. So our um, prediction and our five-year trend has held true. Um, one of the things I ask for you to remember is in order to close the budget gap last year due to the 25.9% health insurance increases that we had to reduce our staff by over 10 FTEs. And so we're finding that some of the programs have had adjustments with enrollment, such as the English. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're within standards of quality. English has the most stringent standard of quality associated with it. It's a ratio of 1 to 25, and it's not an average. It's a standalone. And that's very really different from how the others are done. And I think that's also important to mention that we're great class. We do have the physical classroom space. What we actually are struggling with is the physical classroom space for 29 fourth grade bodies. <laughs> um, they are sandwiched in there like sardines, um, but we do have the classroom space to accommodate. Yes, sir. Okay. 
So now we'll have Mr. Taylor to have the next three. Okay. Um, one of the uh, next items is the chorus teacher. But I would say that uh, in the past, band teachers have, have been chorus teachers. But now the studies show the different needs and issues that students have, and ways of expressing themselves. Uh, they always don't get an opportunity to do that uh, unless they're a specific person assigned to the movie. So we're looking at a chorus teacher for them. Uh, the goal is 1.4 student achievement, um, 3.3 in mental health and loneliness. Um, and we're trying to address the arts as a form of um, improvement uh, for additional um, success for students. Currently, um, CMS and um, CHS do not have for So this would be uh, a one that would be shared between the two students. And the cost is uh, $17,151. Um, the next uh, person or item on the entity that we're looking at is a behavioral specialist. Uh, that's goal 3.1, uh, health and safety, mental health and wellness. Uh, goal 1.4 teaching, um, achievement goal 4.2 effectiveness, <coughs> um, management, staff, and student relationships. Uh, a, a behavior specialist is a need. Uh, and one might look at other persons who are in the system already, look at persons and systems principles and other people in the administration. <coughs> but if we look at culture and look at the kinds of issues that we're getting, uh, the students are having. We have people in many instances that are not uh, able to address those issues. There are specific people who have specific training that help them to address some of the um, uh, uh, tier two and tier three students. We don't address the needs of those students. They create major issues within our classrooms, within our schools, within our management. We end up having to sometimes uh, place them in other facilities, which becomes extremely expensive. So if we can get people in the system who have those skills and to plan and work with those students, uh, it makes for more success as far as the students are concerned, as well as far as the uh, students are concerned. So behavioral specialists develop individual behavior plans for tier two or three students support and implement uh, the positive behavior interventions and support. Uh, they create functional behavior assessment uh, for individual students and they serve as a liaison between uh, individual families. Community-based support for students to, commun to communicate individual students' needs and strategies. Uh, they coach teachers on behavior strategies within our classroom. Uh, CCPS currently employs two specialists. One works solely with special ed students, and the other is paid by Title One members that is supporting it, that is supporting Bowling Green Elementary, Madison Elementary Elementary. The third specialist will support um, North and Clark, uh, Carolina High, and Carolina North. Uh, regular education students experiencing behavior and social emotional difficulties, as well as classroom teachers. So, and the cost of that is about 73,151. And uh, finally, we are looking at a communication and community uh, real relations specialist, basically dealing with um, PR. We have a lot of people, or the same, I should say, of people who feel that we don't do a good job. And we need to change that thing. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a media station uh, that support the great things that we're doing. And uh, a freelance farm has not been effective, I would say, in getting the problems of the hard side. They're just as bad as They're great things. There are great things going on in our people. But if nobody knows about it, then we tend to be punished by the old beliefs and things that are no longer. So 
we need that first. Mr. Taylor, can I please speak to this point? Sure. When I conducted the 90-day entry plan as I started this position, I met with over 130 stakeholders, and I know you are all aware of that as many of you participated. I asked four driving questions, one of which was, where is our area of opportunity to enhance? And over 80% of those 130 stakeholders talked about rebranding, public relations, doing a, a community blitz in terms of getting our narrative out there and telling our story in a positive fashion. I spend an inordinate amount of time on Facebook, Dr. Monroe, our human resources department, crafting messages to get them out. We have dug as deep as we know how in the area of marketing and media relations and we need someone on staff that can focus on getting that story out for the county as well as the schools so that we can continue to draw business and draw new families to our school system and to celebrate the amazing things that are happening each and every day. So this is a direct reflection of that feedback from that stakeholder interview process. And, and $93,144, and we do have a job description that we can make available to you to provide. Yeah. I'm going to present to you three requests for three individuals. One works in 7 FTE, one FT, or one FTE, the procurement specialist we'd like to engage. As each of us know that regulations are comprehensive and detailed and require specific skills. Um, yeah, but I think that's where the board, our board, would like to join procurement and, and us going to procurement because we're already doing that and have that skill set. Rather than expand into more people and spread out even more what we're purchasing. <coughs> I think there could be a lot of a lot of synergy developed if if that would join forces with us. So I'm just to come in. Um, that is exactly the system. Do you want to speak to? Sure. We are requesting a point four because it's our understanding that you have a point six, and we would love to join <laughs> 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 a full-time position that services. I got a position with a point six. I don't have a buy. Well, oh, oh, I also heard that it was empty currently, but possibly so a full-time position may find a person that would be well equipped to serve both entities and be very open to that. We also, and this may be premature to throw out, throw my card on the table, maybe too early, but when you're thinking about the communications, the community relations specialist, that also could be approached from a job share lens as well if that was appealing to you. Uh, but we definitely believe that getting our message out <coughs> there as a county and as a school system is critical, and so we'd be open to job sharing in that relationship. One of the challenges we're all going to have is minimum wage rising, which is why, to me, my bottom point was where I wanted to start is because that impact to all of us. Oh, sure. the school, I mean, we're looking at a lot of numbers, but the estimate for raising the minimum wage on a lot of employees, I think, is going to kind of frost everybody when they see how expensive that's going to be. And I think before we Mark too much further forward. We need to start looking at what that's going to cost and how we're going to get there because it's a number of employees at a lot of levels and it's going to cause compression all the way up to pay scales. So, nowhere in this, and I understand what everybody's presenting, but I think first and foremost, because if that kicks in one July, we're going to have to be ready to pay that one July and we're going to have to figure out what that impact is first and foremost. Sure, and, and we agree wholeheartedly that that is critical to monitor. That does not, um, we would be remiss not to present what our collective needs are while monitoring legislation and preparing for the potential. Because our collective <coughs> needs can be overridden by the General Assembly's sure. legislation, which will preempt a lot and probably cost us a lot more than anybody's anticipating because of what it does to everybody's pay scale. All due respect to the coach in the last two, we can use our last five or six minutes to make sure the board members understand the gravity of the number that we're looking at. Right. So that's, my intention was to have this meeting here mm -hmm. and figure out what our numbers look like so we wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't work like we had worked in the past, but we have more of a 
amicable. Cooperative <laughs> relationship, exactly. Correct. And, and I think we have an issue, because I know Mr. Black and I talked when I was at that end of the table about making sure we got you the extra six hundred thousand dollars to pay rent. It seems like you're saying, or the Stevens is saying, you never got that if we thought you got it. So we have a couple of issues we need to work through. I didn't say we didn't get 600,000. I said the raise did not cost 600,000. We funded state funding towards that raise. But, but when, we, when we agreed to the salary study and said we were going to break that, what I thought was 1.8 into three sixes, that didn't happen. I can't, I can't go all the way back to when that was in reach because I was not here. I do know the past two raises were at a million dollars a piece and, and we put the state funding towards it. So, so just to cost, just for the school system to just do a step increase with no COLA is $500,000. So that sounds like it requires some additional um, data crunching right. and some additional conversations. So we can set something up for a more detailed conversation focusing on that topic. I mean, for me, it looks like you have 900000 from the state you're going to get probably to cover VRS and insurance. VRS, insurance, and the um, mandatory counselor. Now, don't we have a portion remaining for employee health insurance, and we believe that we will be able to cover that so that there is no health insurance impact on our employees, so that any raise that is able to be given is actually realized in their paycheck. That is the, that is the goal for, I think, both entities. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Underwood, Mrs. Long. I understand. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Black. Because we're rolling up on ten till here in three minutes. But, so, Mr. Cole, you had it. Yeah, it was forty-three, two hundred and forty thousand, six hundred eighteen dollars, give or take our man. That's what we'll put it like. Yes, that's twelve point nine cents. Two hundred fifty thousand. And then, of course, we'll subtract our 900000 and some additional funding that we believe we may have access to um, to contribute. So it does equate to an approximate $2 million, and so we realize that's a large number, and we know that that is, again, like the CIP. It's a starting point of needs. It does not equate to the final outcome, and we recognize that. So that's why we wanted to have this conversation. I also wanted to ask Dr. Monroe if he would take a moment to read some of the action items or Dr. Rollins Bell, whoever has been recording them, just to make sure we captured all of our follow-up items. And then I request if in between now and the February 11th date where we're presenting, if other items come up that you would like to know more about, please have Mr. Cauley share those with us and then I'll do my very best to either respond in advance of that presentation or to build it into the presentation. All your questions are answered as early as possible. The increase in minimum wage I'd like us to have ahead of time. We can, we can do that. We just couldn't have it prepared for today because of the compression. And I know just very quickly, I haven't been able to get into the details of the compression plan, but it's something that's been discussed with the Department of Education. Yeah. And I know just very quickly, I haven't been able to get into the compression piece. We look at all of it, but our lowest paid employee would be a 64% increase. 64% increase on the board. To get to $15. Of your whole budget? No. 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 Their salary. Their salary. Their salary. Their salary. Their salary. Their salary.
and there seem to be uh, perhaps some mixed reactions to the job share for PR, and so I think that's worth following up um, as well. Did I miss anything from one more? Time? One more on my list. And the, the middle school gym floor maintenance is a must. I'm sorry, In terms of the $8,000, I believe that is required to be in the operations budget. Right. We will be able to address that. We can give you specifics, but we have that incorporated in our plan. Yes, sir. Can I, can I ask for the data? I mean, I've, been, I've worked on this for numerous years with the ratio of students, to student teacher ratio at the elementary school, because when you look at the superintendent's annual report, Carolina has been the drawers would be at the bottom, not even on high school, but at the elementary school level. And what, how many classroom teachers have you guys have hired over the past couple of years to make this stuff up? We can give this to you um, with the understanding that it's extremely complex. We have all three uh, schools in K through three are under class size reduction rules, which is not always easy to detect when you're looking at that raw number on the state's website. Additionally, when you're calculating that number, it is all hands on deck that creates that ratio. It's not solely classroom teachers to students. It includes special ed teachers. It includes your specialty teachers. And so it's a false sense of, of accuracy. Um, so we'll give that to you, but we want you to look at it at a lens of those factors, too. Sure. If I can make a recommendation, can we just summary together um, so that we can Yes, we will. At the secondary? Yes. Sure. We can, we can look at the numbers. Uh, yeah. I think you're going to be one to one, so that's. I'll concentrate on that. The numbers on the, the superintendent's website are. Right, um, right. Of course, in the elementary school. Right. Well, high school, so this will be the first class. Is that? Great. Yeah. 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 If I could just add one thing, too. A lot of times when we talk about the ADA in general, too, it's not always, <coughs> it's not always job with what the students need. Sometimes there's a need out there that has nothing to do with the number. And we, we just need to keep that in mind. Because, you know, we might look at it and say, we had 500 students last year, we got 490 this year. Why did we need a special? Because there, are, there is a need that's not being covered. And I don't think that's I don't think that's what anybody on the board of supervisors is saying. What we're saying is the ADM reflects directly how much money we give to the state. You know, and you have needs, like we went through this whole thing, you have a lot of needs. We're trying to meet the needs, that's why we're in that. I and we do appreciate it. We do. I've said on this side, I understand. <laughs> Let me throw one thing at the floor here. I can't give you <clears throat> money amount that's spent on the football fields, like failures and seed, fertilizers, time spent, cutting it, that's uh, right. paint, and so forth, the whole period of time. But, and to give you some idea here, you've got in the fall, starting in August, not fall anymore, but that's when they started, we had three football teams, three school teams, little league teams that's out there, and then soccer, you had both boys and girls, <coughs> JV and varsity. You had field hockey, JV and varsity. So that gives us June and July for grass to grow. Now you know yourself, that's the worst time of the year. If you've got a yard, it's not going to grow in, in two months' time. And with all those kids out there playing at one time, now in your front yard, what do you think it's going to look like after but, but see, that's what I'm trying to do, Coach, because I, I want to be able to say, when somebody comes to me and says, why did you spend all that money turfing the football field? I can say, the school board told me to cost them $8,000 a year to maintain the field. So in 15 years, we'll pay for it, and after, it's, it's like solar. If, if you invest in solar after a certain number of years, you're all in the positive. I'm not trying to criticize. I'm, I'm on your side. Trust and there's also maintenance on the on the turf as well right. that needs to be looked at because that's <laughs> one of the issues. I do you have as much? Yeah, you have as much as you can in there to help us justify it. That's really great. That's the key. Really important. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
secondary is at 812. So just wanted to clarify that. It's 655. So it's the last time they're making some like air conditioning. That's in the CIP. It says CHS, CTE, air conditioning. That's installation of air conditioning in those three CTEs that were not included in the renovation. Some of those things, like the boilers, we had to fix in the middle school. We need to talk about something more. Yes. Somebody else can do that. That's why we're so excited about IKEA boxes. I call this create that life cycle process of associated with the replacement which we have not had readily accessible to us. So we're looking forward to the long term. Yeah, we have Mr. Cully follow up on a bunch of this to gather these numbers. I have a motion on a second. Second. Have a motion to second all in favor so you can probably say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? <coughs> Meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Uh, 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 u